Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to replicate the numerical example that is shown in this uh, textbook, the Bertolt Miller textbook. The example is assuming that in the economy, the depreciation rate is zero, right? So there is no depreciation. And let's start with population. So in this, I want you to, to do this example in Excel. <clears throat> so I think it's um, the easiest way to replicate the results that you would see in the textbook. So for example, in column A, you will have time. And let's assume that the economy starts in the year zero. So this year, population is 1,000 individuals in the economy. And one of the assumptions that we made in the solar model is that the population grows at an exogenous rate n. So in particular, for this example, let's assume that population grows at the rate 5% uh, per year. In year number one, population will be the previous, um, the previous population times one plus the, uh, this rate n which gives you the, the population growth rate. So in this case, is one is 8,000 times 1.05. And you will use the same formula for each new year, right? So you take the previous population and you multiply it by one plus the population growth rate. Um, if I were you, the, what I will do is to just write the formula for, in this case, row number five, and then pull down the formula to reproduce the, the population growth for, for all the years that you, that you want um, to estimate, right? So let's say that in this particular example, I am using 300 years, but you can do it for more if you want. Um, so that's in terms of population. This is easy peasy. For capital stock, but let's assume that the initial capital stock is sixteen thousand, and I'm um, and I'm going to explain the accumulation in a moment. Let just give me uh, let, let me explain you before that the national product. So we are going to determine GDP based on the following production function. We are going to assume that this economy produces using a Cobb Douglas production function. And in particular, the, the exponents of this production function are alpha equal to one half, and clearly one minus alpha is going to be also one half. Um, so that's why I put the production function here as the square root of the product of uh, capital and labor. And in particular, in, in Excel, the formula for the square root is uh, just SQRT and then your variables um, that you are going to to take for for which one you're going for which you're going to take the square root in this case the product of capital and debt all right and you will do the same for every year right so again so once you have one formula you just pull it down and, and you will produce all the results nice But in, in, in the P set, what I'm asking you is to plot the capital labor ratio. And capital labor ratio is just the clearly the ratio between capital stock and uh, population. So for example, in year zero, the capital per worker is 16, which is just the, the ratio between 16,000 and 1,000. The last, the last piece of information that you need to complete this example is the savings in the economy. And what we assume in the solar model is that savings is equal to investment. And savings in particular are determined by a fraction of the product. And in this uh, numerical example, this fraction is one fourth. So you multiply the product by 0.25 and that will give you uh, the investment in, in the economy. 
Why do we need investments? Well, because capital stock in the next period is a function of investments and capital in the previous period. So you can see how I just sum the value of the investments in period zero plus capital stock in period zero, and that should give me capital stock in period one. Same idea for period two, I'm gonna show you the formula. So in period number two, capital stock is just the investment in period number one plus capital stock in period number one. In your case, you're going to add to this formula the depreciation rate. Basically, the only change is that to this formula, you will add the multiplication of uh, one minus delta to uh, capital in the previous period. And that's it. There is nothing else to change. So you already have the answer. <laughs> um, so you just pull down the formula, you will have all the information that you need, right? So there's uh, not much to say about it. Um, the only thing that I want to show you is the graph for capital labor ratio that I produced with this simple example without savings, without um, the depreciation rate. This is how it looks like. And basically, it's what I show in class. You start with this level of capital per worker, and you can accumulate capital as you um, as the time goes by. If you have any questions on how I produce this, this graph, um, I heard that the TA is going to explain or is going to give you some pointers in the discussion section. But let's say, assuming that you know how to, to produce this graph, I just want to explain the intuition in, or the explanation in terms of the, the theoretical model. So it comes here you will use a similar a similar graph suppose that you have that the initial level of capital per worker was k naught k naught is the 16 uh, that we obtain in the excel file so we are start we start at this level and remember that in this case the green curve gives you the production function times the savings rate in the economy which means that basically the, the savings in every period are represented by this, this green curve. And in this particular example, the blue line represents the growth rate of population multiplied by capital. In other words, like more intuitively, this is telling you um, the ad additional work or the additional capital that you need for those new workers in the economy. And I'm gonna explain this in the example. At this point, when capital, the initial level of capital is K0, you are saving more than what you need to compensate for those additional workers in the economy, which means that you will accumulate capital, right? So you will start moving to the right and you will approach to the uh, steady state. If you are going to accumulate capital every period that explaining precisely why the this this graph of the capital labor ratio is increasing over time but at some point it will it will be flat suggesting that the economy will reach the steady state at some point and it will remain there forever unless there is another shock in the economy but at some point the economy will reach the steady state and what we say in economics is that in the long run, any economy will reach the steady state. So basically that's it. Uh, your job is to replicate this same example, but uh, the only thing that you have to do is to modify here column C in, in order to include the depreciation rate. Well, I hope this video was uh, useful. And if you still have any questions, come to office hours or send me an email, okay?